from a risk perspective, from a risk perspective, Suriname is vital. Because one of the challenges that we have, being a small development bank in a small geographical region, is concentration risk. Concentration risk is not a good thing for any financial institution. So we have to work very, very hard in order to ensure that we do not become too concentrated. Suriname has a strong economy. They are growing very rapidly, as you'll hear from Dr. Ram. And therefore, their needs are great in terms of financing. We intend to be a very strong partner with Suriname. It took us 17 years. Am I correct, uh, Yvette? 17 years to bring Suriname on board. For any kind of relationship, that is a long haul. How many of you it would take 17 years to consummate a relationship? <laughs> I would like to move to the next important point in terms of our highlights. I spoke about us taking on board the criticality of addressing risk management and a number of other reforms. Well, we went after these reforms with a vengeance, with an enthusiasm. We were determined that we were going to take these things seriously and get them done. We haven't completed the reforms. There's still a lot left to be done. But we have made sufficient progress that Moody's Investors service, Services took the initiative to remove the negative outlook that was on CDB's credit rating and to accord us a stable outlook. That is significant because this is happening at a time when a number of our borrowing member countries were moving in the opposite direction. And as I said in my opening remarks, as goes our countries, so tends to go CDB. So the fact that we were able to move against the tide, I think is a credit to our staff and the hard work that we have been able to carry out. Another accomplishment that I'd like to make reference to is that the CDB was accredited to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Why is that significant? What it means is that gaining accreditation to the UNFCCC is an essential element in CDB's strategy to position itself as a regional financial intermediary for climate change financing. A few years ago, we brought on board Mr. Selwyn Hart as advisor on climate finance. Selwyn came to us with a very, very good track record. And I must say that uh, one of this accomplishment is very much attributable to his, his efforts. And uh, I want to commend him for that. We also launched this year, last year, the Community Disaster Risk Reduction Trust Fund. That is a $23.5 million fund. Major contributors were DFAT-D, that's the Canadian Aid Agency, and uh, DFID of the United Kingdom. There was also a top-up of approximately $2 million, which came by way of the European Union. So those are important developments, because what is it that this Disaster Risk Reduction Trust Fund is all about? What it is, is it is a community-based disaster risk reduction endeavor. What it is doing is it's bringing disaster risk reduction consciousness and projects to the community level, so that all people at that level can start to build their resilience against climate change. CDB over the years has increasingly become a desired financial intermediary for donors to the Caribbean countries. We are comprised of very, very small countries and it is uneconomic for donors to be dealing with every single one of our member countries. So it is convenient, it is useful for them to be able to have access to an institution like ours, which is financially sound, 
financially reliable and has the capacity amongst its staff to be able to execute projects on behalf of others. The European Union has in recent times become more and more of a partner for us in this regard. And uh, during the course of this year, we uh, were able to conclude agreements, uh, one in relation to natural disaster risk management in CARIFORUM countries. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, during the question and answer period. We were also able to sign an agreement with the EU for a Caribbean single market and economy standby and a CARIFORUM EU economic partnership agreement standby facility. All of this for capacity building. Again, we can talk about that in more detail during the question and answer period. We also facilitated resources to the OECS countries from the IDB, uh, as these countries are themselves not members of the IDB. Let me wrap up. I've gone over my time. 2014 and beyond. What is it is that is, it is that there are in our sites going forward? Internally, we want to improve our accountability. We recognize that we have a responsibility not only to our staff, but also to our shareholders and to other stakeholders that we do the things that we say that we are going to do. So that we have got to be able to not only measure, but we have also got to be able to monitor those things that we say we are going to accomplish. We are putting things in place this year to dramatically transform our ability to carry out this responsibility. The other thing that we recognize is we have to communicate better. We can't just use this annual press conference to be able to send the message of CDB's accomplishments. And if we have learned any lesson, it is that we need to communicate better with our staff. That's where it all begins, communicating with our staff even as we sell our message externally. Speaking of externally, the challenge in the operational work, as I alluded to earlier, is to ensure that we stick to our mandate of meeting the needs of the most deserving in our member countries, while at the same time running a good bank. CDB is both bank and we are also development institution. That is sometimes a very difficult road to travel. But we, without the bank, without the solid financial institution, there is no development function. So that we have got to continuously focus and to develop strategies that do not put us in a position where we undermine the viability of the bank. And that is one of the reasons why we drafted and shared with our shareholders at our annual meeting in St. Lucia last year a strategy for doing exactly that. The elements of it are diversification of the portfolio and focusing on those countries that are relatively underserved in CDB. 